Rockstep Radio, on demand with Kevin Leach. We're here at DJAM 2016 in the north of England, and I'm joined by Gaston Fernandez. Welcome, Gaston. Thank you so much. Here Welcome I am. to Rockstep Radio. It's, uh, it's a pleasure being here. Pleasure also to have you here. So, Alba was supposed to be here with you. Where, where is Alba, your teaching yeah, partner? She's in Madrid. It's a shame. I hope she gets well soon, but she gets some fever. I was a little bit worried about that, and she needs some antibiotic and rest a little bit. And this is the reason why she's not here. But I hope, Alba, that now you are getting better and better. Hopefully, we have more things to do next weekend and in the week. Hopefully, she will be okay. Get well soon, uh, Alba, from, from all of us here at DGEM and uh, Rockstep Radio. And, and sorry, sorry you couldn't be here. Uh, so, so, Gas, we can call you Gas? Yeah, please. Tell us, first of all, so you, you were a tango dancer, first of all. Is, 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 that how dance, is, is that how your dancing journey began? Yeah, it started with tango, um, like in the 2000s. But after six months doing tango, I, I met the guy that was doing some lindy hop, and I started to learn some swing dancing in Buenos Aires. And that was actually when the swing started in Buenos Aires. And then I started to do tango and swing, but tango, I would say, more professional. I started to teaching, to performing in some uh, in some big shows. And then I, dis- I for a while, I need to take the decision if I will keep going as a tango professional dancer, who's just like, you know, like more like amateur, like doing for fun. And something in that moment changed me, and I didn't want to do keep dancing like a professional. And then I keep working, studying, and training, and doing things. And then that was when the Lindy Hop hook, hooked me, and I, I couldn't let it go anymore. And that was like, let's say, 2004 or something like that. And, and that took over completely from tango then? Yes, did, yes. did tango take a real backseat at that stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I, when I, some people ask me if I'm a tango dancer, I say, I know tango, I know how to do tango, but I, I'm not a tango dancer anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I know a lot about tango. I studied for like six years, something like that, but I mean... Uh, I would say that nowadays I'm not a tango dancer anymore. Well, you're a busy man and there is only so much time. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Uh, And Buenos was your hometown, is that correct? Uh, Buenos Aires was my, where I was born, but now Madrid is my hometown. I live in Madrid now. And why why Madrid? What what took you there? No, the Lindy Hop. I mean, when I, I, the Lindy Hop started to be more and more in my life. And then the swing dancing in general, the blues, Lindy, Balboa and everything. And then for a while I decided to okay become a professional dancer. And that was a really hard thing. And back in the day I was working with Tina Risa. She now is living in Australia and maybe she will have a baby right now or maybe tomorrow, I don't know, but in these days. And she was my very first partner and we worked a lot. And then when, when she decided to move and get married and move to Australia, then I have no dance partner. And I was doing for my own a couple of gigs and seeing how I can do to become, I mean, improve as a dancer. And then I met Alba, that was in London, and then we started to talk about that. She was like being a pharmacist back in the day, and she was thinking like become a, a you know, a school owner and a, a professional dancer. And I encouraged her at somehow. I just like tried to show her how she can do it, and then she did it. And then she called me and said, "Okay, I have an idea. I have a plan." I say, "Let's talk about that." And they invite me to go to Madrid. First, she did for one year. She told me, "Maybe you can come here for one year and." help me to teach someone that can teach with me. And I asked her, but why one year? What, what about if we just we do it? Why not forever? Yeah. <laughs> or, or as much as we can, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that was happened. And was there much of a swing dance scene in Madrid at the time, or did you develop that? I mean, we did, we did develop it, but it's not just because us. I mean, in Madrid, the swing explodes right now. Uh, let's say when, when Alba and me, we arrived to Madrid, was just two schools. Maybe, maybe three schools, let's say three schools, and I don't know, like let's say 400 dancers. And now it's seven schools and more than 1,000 dancers in, in, th- in three years. Where is the, the Lindy capital in Spain? Is it Barcelona or is it Madrid? I will say that the biggest is in Barcelona right now. Yeah, they, they have like three big schools that they have like 1,000 of students each. And I think, that, I don't know exactly, nobody knows, but let's say that Barcelona, maybe they have like 7,000 or like 9,000 or something. You know, like in Madrid, I would say like we are 1,000, 1,500 or something like that. I don't think I'm more than that. 
you still have quite a connection with South America. How, how much time do you spend there per year? Not that much as I want. I have a nephew and a niece. And I really miss them. I All the time I do some small videos and send it to them to try to see where his uncle is. But I mean, uh, I visit Buenos Aires maybe two, 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 two times per year or once per year. Uh, you, you run the Lindy Hop Argentina Festival. Yeah. Yes, yes, that was the live. Call it we call it live Lindy Hop Argentina International Festival, and it was great. But now anymore, it's not going anymore. We did it seven times and it was better and better each time. We have the pleasure to have like Frida Segerdal there or Kevin Saint Laurent. Frankie Manning was really close to come, but he couldn't, and then he passed away. It was a really shame that we miss we lost that opportunity, but it was a pleasure. Mm. Other events that you're involved in, you run in Madrid the Spanish Blues Festival? Yes. Because you're you're also uh, a blues dancer. Yes, I am. <laughs> tell, tell, tell us quickly about, uh, oh, well, take take your time, actually, if you, if you wish. Tell us about uh, how you migrated or you, how you added blues dancing I into your dance vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Well, that was fun because I have a friend that she came to Buenos Aires uh, to learn some tango. And then we was dancing, and she asked me, ah, but you do swing. I say, yeah, and you tango. I say, yeah, then you do blues. She say, and I say, what? <laughs> <laughs> they say, nah, I, I can't do that thing. So I don't know what you mean with that. And then after in the party, someone put like a, you know, like a weird song, like really slow. Maybe it was waiting in the water. I don't know. That was back in the 2005 or something like that. And then we start to dance, and she say, do you see? You, you do blues. It's like, <laughs> and then I start to be interested on that and I start to learn to study some blues music and then yeah little by little the, the blues start to grow and be part of me uh, I will say that was like a discovery for me because nobody actually teach me but I, I start to learn and dancing and seeing what feels right what doesn't feel right then watching other people dancing and try to compare what I do it was more like that. That anyway. seems to be how the the blues root w works for many people. I spent some time last night in the blues room here, and I, you know, blues is 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 fairly alien to me. I, I've only been swing dancing for for a few years, but it's amazing what just spending time on that social dance floor can do in in that environment. Mm -hmm. as, as you say, you you kind of you pick up bit by bit, and then you know, if people say, "Do you blues?" and then the answer is, "Well." I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that blues is really open dance. And, you know, like, I will always say that, let's say that the swing music is, let's say, like, this big, you know, and you, you have, like, let's say, th 30 years in this in this thing, like, a lot of music in, in this. And you have, like, Balboa, Shaq, Carolina Shaq, Tap Dance, Lindy Hop, Charleston. You have many dances. And then if this is swing music, then blues music maybe is, like, this room. And we have just one dance. We call it blues dance. <laughs> uh, that, but that make make it so big. You know, uh, anything can be blues. You need to learn aesthetic. You need to learn rhythms. You need to learn to identify some different kind of blues. And then it's up to you what, what you can do with that. And then let let's let's the, the, the play the game begin. You know. So so when you dance now as a professional dancer, do you think uh, you know in a particular dance? I am now dancing Lindy, I am now dancing blues, mm. or is it really a combination uh, of the, the yeah. various styles that you've developed? It's really weird to say, I mean, it's hard to say that. You know, it's not like water and oil, you know, like you different is right there. I think I'd, I, I sometimes I can say, yeah, now I'm doing Lindy. Uh, and then maybe mix a little bit, and then the, you shake it a little bit, and then they start to go back and forward. But but yeah, I mean, right now I'm, I'm, I do Lindy Hop, uh, Blues, and Balboa, uh, and as well fast blues or so, uh, strutting, and then it's so similar to to Balboa, but the, the things change. And what the things that make different? I mean, what why is different one thing or the other one? Okay, that's a hard thing to say, but I try to put my attention in the culture of all that dance. Try to understand where is coming the Balboa, where is coming the blues, and try to recreate that with my body. I don't know. Hopefully, the people will see it. <laughs> but I have like something like I say all the time. Like I want to see a dancer take out the music and understand what he's doing and know if he's doing tango, if he's doing blues, or if he's doing Lindy Hop, or if he's doing slow dance. Or w w what you are doing is just because I see you dancing, not because I hear the music. I, for me, that is a good thing. If you can do that and you see that, okay, now I'm doing Lindy Hop. Well, now I'm doing blues, and then I think that you got it. So tell us about the uh, Spanish Blues Festival. It's coming up in April in Madrid. Yes, it's coming in April. Right now it's completely full. 
uh, but we have as well the Petit ESBF festival that will be coming in December. And the idea of both festivals is like find your own blues, something similar we was talking before. Our, our idea is like not, not just one way to do the things, it's, it's many ways. You know, like like Jimmy Lucent for and Lela Fitzgerald doing is not what you do, it's the way that you do it. This is what we think. And this is what we expect in the ESBF. We try to hire a different kind of teacher. We try to l give them freedom to teach what they want and try to find a way. But we try to keep in the in the blues roots, you know, like it's not like a fusion even. We try to keep that track, like you try to use authentic blues music and from there it grows. And this year we are really happy because we are doing that. We are hosting the, the event in Big Mama House. This is the place that Alba Mini we built. We are with another partner with Manuel. We are so happy because we have our own place now. Uh, it's, a, it's a really beautiful, <laughs> perfect, uh, you know, wooden floor, spring, like it's really nice uh, and beautiful. And this time the, we are hosting the ESBF in that, in that beautiful room. That would be nice. Is it tempting when an event such as this is successful to to make it bigger because there are people who want mm. to attend who can't what how what's the balance there between um, no actually you, yeah go, actually go we are doing it smaller uh, a little bit than before because we wanna I mean I I do understand I love the big events because it's a lot of energy going around but you know like the organizer the Arbiki and Al Adamo Alba me and all of us we are working a lot doing a lot of things and we have not the time to try to focus in that big events. We prefer to have it a medium event, but feels like right, you know, just right. Like feel like, uh, everything is fixing each other, fixing together and, and working well. And I think that this is what the ESBF is. I mean, is we will like have 170 students, something, no more than that. Um, the dance night will be no open for no one else, will be the same people that is in class. And uh, we we expect that they all of them met together. They had a positive dance with all of them, and not growing more than that. As well, we host a, a show on Sunday. We try to make all the teachers do things, perform. We have not competition in that event because we think that uh, we can show what we want in the show, not in the competition. Mm -hmm. I, I love competition, don't get me wrong, eh? but I'm saying this is the ESBF philosophy. Like we want to have like uh, dance all the night and then see some shows on Sunday. This is the, the idea. If you're running such an event, how much can you enjoy it? <laughs> that's a good one uh, but you learn. Is it, I mean are you quite hands on when you're yeah yeah actually uh, uh, you know we are four and we have different tasks let's say mm. and my tasks is more like uh, on, the sp on the spot on the event working and making the thing working uh, yeah obviously you work a lot but the first the first year you don't enjoy it at all and you're thinking I'm not doing this anymore <laughs> Uh, the second year, you think, I'm not doing this anymore, but this time, okay, yeah, I have like few moments that enjoy. But after the third or the fourth, you, you learn how to do it and when take your time to enjoy it. Or maybe, obviously, if it's a fire, you go and take care of the fire. When we finish that, you're not thinking, oh, what I did wrong, just you go back and go to dancing. I would say like uh, more and more I'm learning to join the, the, the to join the festival, you know, not just to be there working. Let's hope there isn't a fire. Yeah. At, at, at this year's, <laughs> it, uh, it's actually an expression about that. Sorry if I confused, but you know. No, no, I, we, we know what you mean. Uh, tell us, um, you are a DJ um, as well as your, your dancing and, and teaching. Um, and running this wonderful event. Um, you're a, a huge collector of jazz music, uh, yes. I understand, and I imagine blues music also. Yeah. Um, how, how many tracks do you think you have is an obvious question. It's, re it's really hard, but the last time that I did a, a backup of my music, I have like, uh, let's say, 200 and 250 gigabytes of, of blues and swing music. The people ask me, but do you listen to all of them? I say, no. <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm not looking for new new songs. I'm all the time looking for in the song that I have. Uh -huh. Because I didn't hear all of them. I tried to, let's say, one day I say, okay, just listen to Colin Hawkins. And then I, I go for that and dig on that thing, try to find some new tunes. Like, it's, yeah. Do you have some kind of system for, for rating the tracks of the ones that... Um, you know, when you hear a track and you think, wow, you because if you're on a dance floor, I mean, you say you're not looking for extra music. If you're on a dance floor and you hear a track, is the temptation to kind of get distracted from the dance and say, what is this? I need to find out what this, what this track is. And, and I suppose you go straight to the DJ afterwards. What was that track? I, I do that sometimes, but not that often because, you know, like 
For me, the swing music is about timing. I mean, the, the dancing is about timing. It's about like do the things in the correct tempo. I, I feel the same thing when I'm DJing and when I'm teaching. Sometimes you come with a plan and then you need to throw it away and start from the from again, like change the plan completely because it was not the correct timing for that plan. And I think the same thing is with the swing music. When I'm playing swing music for dancer or blues, any, anything, I mean, try to see them and try to... to be empathetic with the floor dance, what, what they want, what is happening. That was after the competition. The people have like a high energy, okay, then then give them some high energy. But you know, because sometimes you say, oh, that was a great song, but it was not the great song, it was a great timing for that song. It was the moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is what I mean. I, and I try to apply this to, to all what I do, because mm -hmm. when I, I'm teaching or I'm performing, like sometimes it's about timing. It's not about what you're doing, teaching, or playing that time, or the song that you're listening, it's about what create the, in that moment. Yeah. Why? And if that? you're teaching a workshop when everybody's full of energy on a on a Saturday afternoon, maybe very different to on a Sunday morning, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you yeah. Then you need to change the plan again and try to see what is going on there. Exactly. Uh, have you enjoyed your time here at DJ? Oh, I, I'm enjoying it so much this event. I was surprised because I mean, Alba taught me a lot about this. I don't know if you know, but this was the event that Alba come. I think I was the first uh, like important um, workshop that she attended as a student. Mm. And now that she get invited as a teacher, she was really, really excited. And she started to talk a lot about this event. And I couldn't understand it because I never saw it. I, I, I didn't know it. Uh, you know, I'm from Buenos Aires. I'm here just like for three years. I don't know all the event that is going on here. Uh, and it was a shame that she couldn't come. But when I arrived here and I find this beautiful place, all that energy, all those dancers, the performance the other day, the dinner yesterday it was like, oh man, this is really good. And I'm enjoying everything. I actually, I, I'm teaching with different teachers right now. I'm like changing the plans again, but they are really into that. I having a great time. When I come, I was a little bit stressful because I, I thought, okay, I don't know what I will teach. I don't know the people. I was changing the plans mm -hmm. that I had, uh, but it's going really well. And I'm so happy to be in here. But that's a great legacy for the event, isn't it? The story about Alba coming here and and now she's teaching. It's kind of come full circle. Um, and right, <laughs> that's the fire alarm, guys. Yes, fire alarm. Yes, Let's do it. Lovely to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. For more on-demand content from Rockstep Radio, go to rockstepradio.com.